Hola amigos. Javier here for Home of the Earth. Signing in from Nazca, Peru. Specifically the city, which I believe is the capital of the province of Nazca. And, and more importantly, it is named after the Nazca culture, which thrived between 100 BC and 800 AD. So Nazca is maybe most famous for its Nazca lines, which are kind of like giant drawings in the sand. So we're in luck. Apparently there is a tower to actually see the I guess hieroglyphics just randomly rode into it on the highway guess it's not that random a tree that's the roots over there as the branches here no, I think that this one's an upside down bird maybe the likes of which I've seen bicycling today intricate ones in the desert here but that once again you have to get a plane because they don't have towers everywhere but there's also a little less famous Los Paradones an archaeological site just outside of Nazca so even though it is in the heart of the Nazca territory, um, this was actually, Los Paradones specifically, was an Inca uh, settlement. So this is actually after the uh, Nazca people. So this settlement specifically uh, served as an administrative center for the Incan Empire. Specifically this coastal region here. Had a pretty decent view here, which is kind of a common theme for Incan settlements probably to be able to see oncoming attacks or traders. I don't mean traders in the bad sense. What I'm referring to is that in these times there was no currency. So in order to quote unquote buy things, you had to trade them for things that you had. And this was the main place on the coast where the Incans would do trade and then make an accounting of that. And then things would be sent back to Cusco, which was the heart of the Incan empire. So next, we are going to check out some Nazca archaeological sites. Next up is going to be the archaeological site Tela de Buena Fe.
design kind of looks like the P in the Peru tourism logo. Connecting the dots here. So you may have noticed that the Nazca province is a desert-like environment. But people still manage to do agriculture. And so did the Nazca people. They accomplished this via an intricate system of aqueducts which is a system to transport water from one area like a river to another where there isn't water so that they can do agriculture and in fact these systems were so well built that they still function to this day. There's like more of it than a dozen of these. And they're pretty big and intricate. Don't look necessarily easy to build. This gentleman here just told me that the water comes from the mountains here, Cerro Arena, and runs all the way through the aqueducts to Nazca. Pretty cool. All right, one more site, La Ahuya de Cantayo. Tried to get some information from the lady at the counter there, uh, but she's not able to provide any. But it is possible that not much is known of this site. Regardless, we shall see what it is. It seems to be another sand carved hieroglyph here but I am not sure what it is or maybe it was a landing strip for aerial transport vehicles that we've never seen or never known that existed Probably not, but fun to speculate sometimes. That was pretty cool. Interesting to learn about one more of the interesting um, pre-colonial societies of Peru, which there are many, uh, many of which I've done videos of that you can check out, such as um, the Cuellap Fortress of the Chachapoya people in northern Peru, as well as um, the archaeological sites of Huamachuco, also in northern Peru, both um, civilizations that are pre-Incan, uh, so some really amazing ruins over there 
uh, honestly more interesting than these ones here here is just you know if you're in, in this part of Peru why not check it out uh, but still pretty cool nonetheless and then uh, next I will be going to the heartland uh, of the Incan culture in Cusco so next up I'm going to be going on a little bicycle ride to Cusco which should be a pretty adventurous journey some really desolate areas a lot of climbing because right now we're on the coast and more importantly uh, we'll be getting a great cross-section of all the different environments that you can have uh, in Peru minus the the Amazon so we'll be going through like like five different um, geographical types of environments it'll be like going through different countries but all within Peru so that's the next video coming up so look out for that it should be a pretty good one and if you'd like to see just more videos in general of my time in Peru um, over on my YouTube channel I have a playlist called Peru so you click on that and you can see all the videos that I've made of my time in Peru and I've seen some really cool stuff so I encourage you to check it out and yeah I was in Peru as part of my bicycle journey bicycling from Canada to Argentina if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I did I have that available over on my website follow the hum of the earth.com where you can see my different blog click on the different places and see my blog posts and videos of those places and yeah and if you'd like to follow my continuing journey you can do so by subscribing to my youtube channel by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video hope you guys enjoyed have a good one